Hi, welcome to Victory Santa Rosa. I'm Jansen. I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to our online worship service, by the way. Before we proceed with our service, let me remind you we have a new service schedule. So it will be 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. And we also have a webinar for singles entitled Singles Not Alone. Again, this is the poster, Singles or Single Not Alone. Hope we find you in that particular webinar. Now, as we dive into God's Word, you know, I, I'm not sure if you are familiar with this thing. You know, I am, this is so useful, very practical to me. This is a post-it note and I have it everywhere. It helps me to be reminded of the many things that I normally tend to forget. Most importantly, the things that my wife wants me to remember. But do you know that this was invented by accident? Now, apparently, and you will find this in the company website, that 3M as a company wanted to invent notes that would have very tough, strong adhesives. And obviously, the post-it, this post-it does not have a really tough or strong adhesive. In fact, this was a failed experiment. And so they have to set it aside until one day, another scientist realized that because he was in church and he needed some bookmarks wherein he can write down notes in his church hymnal, it dawned on him that they had a failed experiment at 3M and it is something that he could use. So he used it for his church hymnal book and then he mentioned it to the other scientists and they realized that this might be the use of this failed experiment. Lo and behold, I mean, after that, or the rest is history. I mean, this post-it note is everywhere. It's really here in my Bible. It's in my other notebook, my journal. It's in my laptop bag, on top of my desk, beside my bed. I mean, it's everywhere. Every time I have a meeting, yes, I use the laptop. I use my phone heavily, that smartphone, all the features of digital technology, technology, but then again, I still have to use my post-it. It helps me to remember things that I normally forget. Now, the preaching today is about what God wants us to remember, most especially in these difficult times, that we have the tendency to forget because of the unprecedented challenges that we face we have to be reminded of what we have in Christ. So open your Bibles to Romans 5. We'll read, as we preach, we'll read verses 1 to 11. But for now, as we start our service, we'll uh, read the overarching truth of Romans 5, which is verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. Lord, we pray that your spirit will help us today by opening our hearts and our minds to understand your word, that we may bring glory to you, that we may do your will, and that we may live our lives for you, God. All these things we ask, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when Paul mentioned that first line, therefore we have been justified by faith. I mean, that, that, that phrase is actually a summary of Romans 3 and Romans 4. Romans 3 says that God is faithful. Romans 4 says that God has called us to live by faith and to be faithful to him. Romans, Romans 5 is about the intersection of Romans 3 and 4. Paul speaks of how will God, who's faithful, and how will us as humanity, his children, called to be faithful to him. I mean, how will that happen? The answer is Romans 5. It is the intersection of Romans 3 and 4 telling us how we can 
continue to experience the faithfulness of God and how we can live continually faithful to God. So when Paul said, yes, therefore we have been justified by faith, and then he mentions, he continues that particular sentence or on that particular letter to the Romans by saying, and this is a very controversial statement, he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if Paul, or if, if in Paul's time or the early church, if they already had social media, I mean, this word peace or this phrase, peace with God, would be trending. I mean, all time, unprecedented. Trending every week, top 10 ng hashtags, peace with God or peace, trending yan. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and what have you. All social media platforms, trending on peace with God. Why? Because this term is unheard of. What is unheard of? Well, some of us would think that when we say peace in the time of Rome, or when Rome was in power, they were well known for it. And that's true. I mean, you would have that word called Pax Romana, if you still remember our history, or world history. Pax Romana, meaning Rome is known for, yes, ruling the modern world at that time with what they call peace. But you see, if we really investigate on how that peace happened, ironically, peace happened for Rome because they ruled like hell. Let me say it again. Ironically, peace happened at that time because they ruled like hell for people. I mean, they ruled with exorbitant taxes. It was crazy impossible. No wonder people hated tax collectors like Zacchaeus and Matthew. They wanted to place people, you know, at, at, at a point where they can control them. So they, they, they imposed exorbitant taxes. On the other hand, they also ruled with an unreasonable sword. Meaning, this, they ruled with, you know, practically brute force, military strength. That's why Roman soldiers are known for their war skills or fighting skills. And so they were able to achieve peace by really being cruel. And so for the people at that time, for the church, when they say you have peace with God or peace with an authority figure, figure, wow, this is unheard of. Paano magkakaroon ng peace? Parang eh, hate na hate nila yung authority at that time. And then you're telling us, Paul, that we can have peace with God? And so because this is highly controversial, Paul expounds it for us in this particular chapter. How can they achieve peace with God? What does that peace with God mean for them? Let's dive into scripture. As we do, we will look at the post-it reminders of Romans 5 for us as we go through this, as we go through a totally new season, very challenging one for us today. Now, in verse 2, it says, through him, we have obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand. So now Paul expounds the concept of peace with God. In what does that peace with God mean? First, this is the reminder. We have access. We have obtained access to God by grace. We have access to his grace. Simply said, grace is unmerited favor, meaning we don't have to earn it. Now, for the church at that time, both Jews and Gentiles, the, the church in Rome, this is also something foreign because they live in a society wherein they have to work for rights and privileges. Meaning, remember, we were talking about it earlier, they have to pay exorbitant taxes. For what? For them to continue to enjoy the peace and the protection of Rome, right? We're kind of familiar with that concept. Why? Because we don't have to go far in history because our societal setup today is still the same. And we're not even talking about it from a negative perspective. 
but from a neutral one. Isn't it that when we want things for us, we have to earn it? In society, that's simply how it is. Again, not from a negative point of view, but from a neutral one. You want greater comforts in life. You want uh, to enjoy things. What do you have to do? You have to pay for it. And to be able to pay for it, we have to work for it. You want your business to give you more, meaning that the, the, the fruit of that business will allow you to uh, enjoy life better. Guess what? You really have to work on your particular business. Even in, in, in your company, for example, you're, you are an executive. The, the company gives you a car. They're not giving you a car because they're fond of you. No, they're giving you a, they're giving you a car because of your expected output wherein you have to maintain that particular output to enjoy keeping that car plus your all other your all other privileges so we are in that particular setup but then again paul's point for the church at that time is that yes we live in a society wherein you have to earn things but the grace of god is unmerited in fact it is something that we don't earn it is something that we can simply embrace. First post-it reminder for us as we go through this challenging season, embrace God's grace. If you have to earn God's provision, if you have to earn God's mercy, if you have to earn God's joy, I mean, if you have to earn the blessings of God, then it is not grace. In fact, God owes you these things because you've earned it. But it's not how the Bible lays it out for us. He says that the grace of God, the favor of God, is something that we just have to simply receive and embrace. All of us need something from God now. Oh, definitely. Provision. We want protection from God to keep us strong and healthy. We all are making major, minor major decisions in life, in our family, in our relationships, in, in, in your company, your work, your businesses. There are things that we need to adapt to. I mean, there is tons, an avalanche of decisions that we need to make on a daily basis. We need God. And what Paul is saying, let's embrace the grace of God. You can embrace it. Now, some of us, some of us now may be saying, well, I don't deserve that grace. If you really are honest with yourself and you're saying, well, I, I, how can I expect the grace of God wherein I have not been attending service or I've not been really a good or godly person? Or maybe you're saying, how can I expect God to help prosper my business or make my business survive wherein there are certain business practices that are not really aligned to his word or to his ways. Or maybe you're saying, how can God give me peace in my relationship when I know that in these relationships, I'm not really godly at all. Now, if you feel you don't deserve it, if you feel you are not worthy, let me say this important truth. And I'm not saying it because it's my opinion, but because but I'm saying it, it's primarily because it's what the Bible is saying now. If you feel you're not worthy, here's the thing. You still can embrace God's grace. You don't have to earn it. You just have to simply receive it. Now, if you feel you're not worthy, I'd like to invite you to a prayer right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. If you, what, whatever it is that you feel like you're not, you, it's making you not worthy to receive the grace of God. I'm inviting you to lay it down before God right now. Let's ask for his forgiveness. Let's repent and let's declare that from this point on, you will follow God in all your ways. Is that good? Okay. I will lead you into prayer. So you just follow me with all your heart. And this is what I want you to do now. 
before I pray, before we pray, think of whatever it is that makes you feel not worthy of God. Is it a relationship? It is a work. Is it a work or business practice? Is it probably some certain ways or practices or habits that you may have? Think about it right now. And then we will ask God's forgiveness together in prayer. Think about it. I'll give you a few seconds. All right. Now repeat after me. Lord, I come before you with all my sins. And I ask for forgiveness. I thank you that you died on the cross, that I may be forgiven, and that I may have eternal life. Lord Jesus, I am declaring right now that I am turning away from all my sins and I am turning to you, my Lord, my Savior. Help me, Jesus, to receive your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's move along our second post-it reminder. Let's pick up from the second half of verse 2 and we'll read up to verse 5. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, the church in Rome was going through hardships at that time. There were many transitions, social and political. In fact, this is the reason why we are in this series. Because the, 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 the milieu, the social, political, economic milieu of what the church was going through in the time of the Roman Empire, it produces hardships, which is quite similar for what, on what we're going through today in this particular pandemic. And Paul's point at this, for this particular section was very simple. You can rejoice in your suffering. And he was not talking about jumping for joy, celebrating, shouting at the top of your voice. He was talking about an internal sense of comfort and peace that you can still have joy in the time, in times of suffering, mainly because you can find hope amidst suffering. Our second post-it reminder today through this passage, hope even in times of suffering, meaning we can hope or hope, push it, hope in times of suffering. Paul was talking about two kinds of outcomes here. He was talking about a personal outcome and he was talking about a situational outcome. He says that you go through this suffering, this suffering would have good benefits for you. Suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and this hope will not be futile. But he also starts by saying, well, not just, it's not just about personal outcome. Remember that we hope in the glory of God. Meaning, at the end of all this suffering, it, there is a glorious outcome. In other words, there is a good, situational outcome that will bring glory to God. Again, a personal outcome and a situational outcome. Now, if we think about that, in fact, we're very used to that principle as well. For many of us who have children here, or even if you don't have, I believe you can be able to, you can relate to this particular principle. For us, as parents, there would be times that our children, whatever age, from toddler, preschool, up to maybe college, they would be complaining about school. And they would be saying, this is hard. And pag mga magulang, ano normally sinasabi natin? Iisa lang naman ang dialogue natin, di ba? Pare-pareho lang yung punto natin. Kung baga, iba-iba lang yung paraan natin kung paano natin sabihin. Sabi, hindi. Anak, magsumikap ka. 
Nung no, magsumikap ka, tiyagain mo lang yan. Kapit ka lang dyan. Tiyagain mo lang yung school mo. Because at the end of it, I mean, it will give you better life opportunities. I mean, yun yung normal dialogue natin sa mga bata. But in the same way, it talks about the two outcomes that Paul was referring to. A good personal outcome and a good situational outcome. What are we saying to our children who complain about school? <laughs> you just go through it. But at the end, you will be more hardworking. You will achieve technical mastery. You will be more competent. You will be diligent. And if you finish university or college, oh wow, it will present far better, greater opportunities for you compared to not finishing it. So anak, tuloy mo lang yan. Pagtsagaan na, pag natin lahat yan. Same way. What Paul was saying is that the sufferings that we go through today, kapatid, tsagain mo lang yan. Kapit lang sa pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. It produces a good outcome personally. It produces strong character. It produces resilience. It produces faith. I mean, I mean there's so many things that, 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 that it transforms us really. But not just that. There's also a situational outcome. Whatever it is that we may be thinking of, meaning the suffering from, whether it's relationships, whether it's, it's our faith, it's our family right now, maybe marriage for some, or maybe it's your business or work or career, whatever it is, just go through that particular suffering in faith, doing what's right and righteous at the end of it all, it will be or it will produce a glorious outcome. That will be good for you. It will glorify God as well. Nakakaawa naman kung wala tayong tinitingnan in the future. Di ba? Kung baga yung pananampalataya natin, kung wala tayong po, I mean, we are to be petty. The, the, Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 15. No? Nakakaawa. But then again, hindi tayo nakakaawa. Because we know by faith, our hope, is looking forward to a glorious outcome. Maybe you are in a situation that's really hard. We've talked about it. I mentioned it a while ago. Maybe it's you need hope in your relationship. Maybe marriage. You need hope maybe over the lives of your children. You want to declare that hope. Or maybe we're talking about business or your work. Or whatever it is. Maybe there's something personal that affects you. And it's causing an emotional and mental malady. If you need prayers. In fact, why don't we just pray right now? If that is you, allow me just to pray for you right now. Lord Jesus, we come before you. And we are looking for hope. And God, we know that just as your scripture declares, that because of our relationship with you, we can hope for a glorious outcome, personally and situationally. So Lord, kami dumudulog, lumalapit sa iyo ngayon. Lahat ng mga situation namin, sa pamilya, sa negosyo, sa trabaho, sa aming personal faith, maybe, or sa personal lives namin, Lord God, we come to you asking for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, I ask that you would open your people's hearts and minds to see the glorious outcome that is ahead. Lord, I pray that they will be able to hold on to you by faith, focus on you, Jesus Christ. All these things we ask, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. For our third post-it reminder, let's read verses 6 to 11. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps... For a good person, what would one would even dare to die? But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. 
More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. If you've noticed, Paul was just pounding on reconciliation. We are reconciled. We were reconciled. We have received reconciliation. Meaning, he, he emphasizes the point that we have a relationship with God. Why? Because of the middle section of this passage, of this section. The middle part of it is really the heart of what he wanted to say. And this is our third post-it reminder as we go through this season. And you can find it in verse 8. Verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, and I have to remind you, this is our third, third post-it reminder, but this is very religious. Some of you will feel, alam ko na yan. Some of you might cringe. And this is a very Christianese term. And maybe some of it, Maybe people have been mentioning it to you and you have not been minding it. But this is as true as it can get. In fact, in this third post-it point, I'd like to ask you to do something. This is just three words. Paul's reminder, the reminder of scriptures for us as we go through this challenging time. Just very simple, three words, but very true. Very true. Now, I need you to close your eyes. I'll say the post-it reminder three times. Don't open your don't open your eyes. Just focus on what I will say, and I need you to hear it. Focus on it. Be in the presence of God. All right. Are you ready? Again, close your eyes right now. I'll tell you when to open your eyes, and I will mention it again three times. Close your eyes. This is our third point. This is what Paul was emphasizing. In the second half of this passage. Okay, close your eyes. God loves you. Don't open your eyes. Just listen to me. God loves you. And for the last time, God loves you. In these times, there's a tendency for us to forget how much God loves us. We can be derailed by the trials and the tribulations that we go through, but it doesn't remove the fact that God loves us. In fact, what Paul was saying here, God loves us. He is for us, not against us. He is not an enemy. God is for us. God is behind you. You're going through something. God is for you. He will help you. Third post-it point, God loves you. In fact, if we just summarize all the three post-it points, it leads really to a hook and bait principle from God. You know, God is so creative that even in Scripture, He uses a hook and bait for us. That's how much God wants us. That's how much God wants us to experience Him. Remember, He's saying, oh, wow. You, we have access to His grace. Embrace His grace. Next, we said we can hope or hope in times of suffering. And we're saying third post-it point is that God loves you. Now, what is God doing through scriptures? What is He telling us? Very simple. And this is the biggest post-it reminder for us. This is the hook and bait of God. God wants us. Or maybe God is telling us, telling us today through scriptures, very simple, come to me. Come to me. God wants us to experience his grace. God wants us to see the hope that we have in him. God wants us to experience his love, even in these trying times. God is telling us, Come to me. Amen. Lord, we pray that as we come to you, Lord, we pray that we would experience your grace, that we would see the hope that we have in you, 
both in the personal things that we're going through and even in the situation that we have right now. And God, we pray that your love will envelope us, that we would experience it and live it out, Lord God. And we also pray that we will be able to declare your love to others and demonstrate it. All these things we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow, that's our whole service today. Next week, we'll uh, continue on with Romans chapter 5, the second half of that chapter. Before I end and uh, declare blessings for all of us, let me remind you, we have a webinar for singles, Single Not Alone, and we have our new service schedules, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. And just monitor our social media channels so that we can update you if we can already meet on site right here at the Monochrome Valley or in our Robinsons facility. Oh, by the way, for those of us who are parents, why don't you just click the link? It's right here right now. Victory Santa Rosa Kids. And whatever we've talked about, we'll preach the same thing to our kids in a way that they would understand and hopefully they would love it to the songs, the activities, and the power verses and the PowerPoints that we have for them. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you all.